Good morning, Book It Sports community and people around the globe. Welcome back to another episode of The Morning After. We made it all the way to Wednesday. You know what they call Wednesdays around here? They call them hump days. Because guess what? You got over the hump. Couldn't be more proud of you. We had a winning day yesterday, Josh. And let me tell you something. I'm a little excited about it. Because what did I say yesterday? Grins, get ready to roll the tape. We haven't missed a bet on this show. Now roll the tape of me telling you Michigan State minus 11 and a half was a fucking donkey. Roll the tape of Trent saying, is it Tom Izzo's birthday and is he chasing 700 wins? And now roll the tape of Michigan State winning by a thousand points. Mm -hmm. This Michigan team, they hung in there in the first half. We'll give them credit. But guess what? There's two halves of basketball. I don't know if the world or the sports betting community or sports fans around the globe have forgotten, but there's two halves to the game of basketball. For the love of God, if I get tagged in one more tweet with nine minutes remaining in the first half, that this is the worst bet we've ever made. This is already a loser. I'm going to pull my goddamn hair out. Can everyone just relax? I don't start sweating my bets until there's five minutes left in the second half. A 10-point lead in college, just so everyone knows, isn't a 10-point lead in the pros. A 10-point lead in college can get erased in two possessions. Two possessions. Two of them. Okay? It's a game of runs. It's a game of runs. So when they go on runs early, just know that our team is going to go on a run a little later. And if our team goes on a run first, don't start tagging me and shit that we already cashed. However, I do want to talk about a couple teams. First of all, Villanova, fuck you. And honestly, fuck everyone else that was all on my feed talking about Villanova. After we wrapped the show and I convinced Trent and I to both take Villanova, I checked my feed, everyone's on Villanova. What are we doing? I don't bet like that. I was just talking to Josh about this pre-show. I'm not a sharp better, okay? I fucking hate sharp action because you look like a fucking idiot when it doesn't hit, and that's not how I bet. I bet on the better team with the better matchups, and then I lose my ass occasionally <laughs> when it doesn't work out. This Villanova team is fucking moose. They want Kyle Neptune fired. They paid transfers from Kentucky to come over and average one point a game. They don't have any shooters. And we took them against a Marquette team that's probably going to go deep in the tournament just because the line said they should be favorites at home. What are we doing? <laughs> and I'm not as mad about the Kansas State one. Because guess what? You can't shoot 17% from the field and win a goddamn basketball yeah, game. Man. Fucking hang them up. And you like them. Like, you don't like Oklahoma on the road, so. Yeah, well, I was always going to take Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So you don't, have to get, you don't have to get very mad at that one. But the I, other one. I probably would have, in hindsight, taken Kansas State either way, yeah. or I probably would have stayed away, but I felt like that just felt good because Oklahoma is bad on the road. I've taken Oklahoma on the road, and they've sold my soul. Mm -hmm. But you can't come out and shoot 17% from the field in your own house, Kansas State. Were we partying before the game? Probably. Were we taking... Pardon extra extracurricular activities with some side pieces before the game? Because we came out and we looked flat and we shot 17%, 17% from the field. 17% from the field. I was a horrible student in school. I just want that said. I have never gotten anything near 17% on a test. And I never studied. <laughs> Hand up. I never studied. Never studied. Dude, I never got less than a 50% on a test. I've gotten some 25s. There was a couple quizzes in college I got like 25s on because I didn't study That's and crazy. just showed up. So not even close to 17. But 25 is <laughs> not close to 17. But You're I'm like one question <laughs> off. You're like getting one answer wrong, <laughs> getting a 17. But the fact that I'm showing up, no effort, no studying, and doing better on a finance exam than these kids that are getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to play college basketball is fucking absurd. Yeah, it's crazy. Absurd. We also have a ref raid again. Ref the party guy. of 23. Party of 23. Ref, your table's ready in the back. Grab your coffee. We're making eggs. And don't be afraid to get comfortable. Okay? But Kansas State, um, hang them up. Hang them up. Is that real? K-State had more turnovers than their shooting percentage. That's if you foul. Think of, dude, I don't think I've ever heard that. Dude, that is 
foul. Can I get a stat check on that? We got grins in the background, by the way. Josh in the studio, great show plan. I mean, if they actually sh shot 17%, that makes sense. Like, no, it makes sense. 20 turnovers doable. Um, can I get you on screen? I don't know if you're on screen yet. Get me on screen. I want you to apologize to the people about Tennessee because I would have taken South Carolina if you didn't talk me into Tennessee. Well, I didn't say anything about Tennessee. Oh, I did say that it was going to be a blowout. I said Josh, I'm fading connect because they think it's going to be a blowout. Because it's going to be a blowout. I did say that. I did say Josh, that. I apologize. I apologize. Josh. Also, connect. <laughs> he had, I looked at the end of the game, they had 56 points and he had half of them. He had 28 points. That is fucking. Do you know what he oh finished with? Because he finished with 31. Did he finish with 31? He finished with 31. Thank God we didn't take Michi Johnson. He only had three points. In a game where South Sorry. Carolina won, which is yeah, pretty astonishing. Which, by the way, can we give a round of applause to the Cox? How are they not ranked? I mean, they're they've good. been doing their thing, man. Yeah. Like they're a dangerous team. They just, in that win, conference. They just win ball games. They win ball games. Like it's ugly sometimes, but they win ball games. And speaking of a team I wanted to fade, and everyone has shamed me into never fading them again, and then they lose outright. Shout out the North Carolina Tar Heels. They're not good. They're not you good. You I promise you, they're not good. You can listen to all the bots on Twitter and all the bots on my TikTok that think this Carolina Tar Heels team is the real deal. I got news for you. There is now a strand of DNA in North Carolina basketball that they are not good anymore. They will sell in a big spot. They will not go deep in the tournament. And you can clip that. It's January, what, 31st right now? Mm -hmm. We're a day away from February, not even close to March. And I promise you, this UNC team is going to do nothing. Because, again, when you're playing weak conferences and you don't get battle tested, you don't win big games. That's fair. The Big Ten is shitty teams beating up on shitty teams. The ACC is teams that probably shouldn't have basketball programs beating up on other teams that are blue bloods. And then they get rat fucked in the tournament when they play a good team from a good conference. If you put, I'm not even kidding. If you put South Carolina in the ACC, they might go undefeated in conference play. They might go undefeated they're, in conference. They're play. good. Like they are legitimately good. They're and they're like not even teams. ranked. And they're yeah. middle of the pack in the SEC. How are they not ranked? They have like three losses. Well, now How's they have. That's well, what now they are. Now they are. But I'm saying yeah. like, how are you not before that you've three losses? I don't know. Looking at Marquette Villanova, what the fuck am I doing taking Villanova? I mean, that's just incredible. Um, Ohio State is moose shit. I don't know why the Bucks love them so much. Like, they just shouldn't be anything less than an eight-point underdog every game. Like, this team is horrible. I don't know why they keep getting respect from the books, but I'm over it. It's always when they're at home, too. That's always, dude. Is. Always. But on the, on the road, they'll be short underdogs, too. It's yeah. like, I don't understand. This team is not good. Um. Tech Tech TC was always going to go over. The it's already locked. Did not hit. Shout out. Um, let's see, Josh. Did your plan B hit? No, it got hooked. Do you know what? It was Gonzaga. Do you LMU know over. how many points you said Gonzaga was going to score yesterday? 90. They put up 92. No, I think you said 92. Did I actually? And I think I said 90. No, I think you said 92. If we run the tape back, I'm almost 100% positive Josh said that Gonzaga was going to put up 92, and they put up exactly 92. <laughs> Like, I'm not even kidding. I feel like you think you might have said 90, but I literally think you were like 92 because I remember saying, why don't we just take their team total? That is. Which would have been. That would have been so free. Like free cheese. It's probably like 81 and a half, 82 and a half. Dude, it was probably lower than that because college basketball is plotted. DePaul scored 39 points in a college basketball game. <laughs> nice job, guys. Seton Hall didn't take the foot off the, off the gas at all. They won by almost 40. Jeez. Hey, Shaheen, you can put the walk-ins in up 30. Maybe up 25. That team was never going to come back. 72 to 39. Holy shit. Yeah, that's bad. Taking out their anger <laughs> after getting their nips blown off by, was it Marquette or Creighton on the road? I don't know. You'd know better than me. I think it was Creighton. I think they went up to Creighton and got their fucking nips smacked. Um, I now want to take a moment. Ole Miss basketball is the greatest basketball team to ever exist on the planet. Chris Beard is the best coach in all of college basketball outside of Kim English. This Ole Miss team is a goddamn wagon, and I'm tired of trying to convince you guys otherwise. I'm tired. So you know what? If you switched up and you haven't jumped on yet, there's no more room. Stay on your side. Stay on your side. I made the statement last night. This is my team now. So stay on your side. If you're not already on, I don't want you jumping on in two more games when they cover and went out right at home against Auburn. Okay? So I'm over it. If you're on that side, stay on that side. Because this is now my wagon, who's been there from the beginning, has known we've only missed one bet on Ole Miss. One. This team is fucking deep as they come. 
They've got a top three point guard in the country in Murray, and they've got one of the best utility men in all of college basketball in Alan Flanagan. All right? This team is a goddamn wagon, and I'm wearing all the merch today. All right? I'm wearing all the goddamn merch today. And I won't hear otherwise. So if you're not already on our wagon, if you're not already on our side, stay the fuck over there. Because we're building something special over in Oxford. And I was talking about it last night. If there is one school, I did a whole college football tour. I went to University of Alabama. I've already been to University of Texas. We went to Ole Miss. We went to LSU. Where else did we go, Josh? We went, did you say Florida State? We went to Florida State. You went to Ohio State? Went to Ohio State. I think that was it. I think that's it. That was it. If I could redo my college experience, there was only one place that I would go, and it'd be Oxford, Mississippi. Really? One place. One place. Genuinely, if I could redo it, I would go to Oxford, Mississippi, and go to Ole Miss. That, that place is special, man. There's something special about the sports, the atmosphere, the students, and the campus over in Oxford, Mississippi, that they got building over there. And I'll tell you what, it is my favorite SEC school, and I'm going to say it. They're in my little mistress school in every sport. I'll root for them no matter what. Okay. Ole Miss and Providence, they have the same weight in my book. Nothing like Oxford, Mississippi. Dude, there's literally nothing like Oxford, Mississippi. Like, that is just, like, the greatest place on earth outside of – I'm not going to say it. It's better than Providence or Island. one. I mean, Providence yeah, or Island I mean, is so underwhelming. Yeah. Literally so underwhelming. Yeah, if you were about to compare those two. Yeah, it was just kind of – You could take every like, school in the SEC and compare it to Providence. Sometimes I can be biased, but, I mean, in this spot <laughs> – yeah. It's just a sharp spot to not be biased <laughs> is what it is. Um, but listen, the Ole Miss wagon, I don't even want you to bet on them. If you haven't bet on them yet and you're going to start betting on them, be like, oh, we got a wagon. Like, get the fuck out of here. Because I had a guy in my DMs last night sweating a three-teamer. The last leg was my Ole Miss wagon. And he's DMing me. He's like, should I cash out? It was a $30 bet to win 700-something three-teamer or something like that. Maybe 100 to win 700 Got down to Ole Miss. He could have cashed out for 328. And he was like, what do I do? Do I ride the wagon? And it was halftime. And I was like, listen, I don't ever cash out. I don't like giving people advice because sometimes they get angry. But I said, you could take, take the $300 cash out and you could put a little bit on Ole Miss. Or I said, you could ride the wagon. And he sent me a voice memo. And it said, we're riding the wagon. So me and him were sweating in his DMs <laughs> all night during that second half. And that shit hit. Yeah, it's insane. And he was busting. And I was like, that's why you ride the wagon. And I was like, he was like, that was fucking crazy. And I was like, this is why we do it. <laughs> like, this is why we do it. When you find a wagon in college basketball and you get to watch them at home against the refs, against all odds, smack a team like Mississippi State. I mean, let's go. Let's go. Um, we're not going to get into it just yet, but I'm fully convinced that Providence is going to beat UConn outright. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. We're not going to get into it. Yeah, we're not going to get into it, but I'm going to tell you why. Because <laughs> I have, on my drive over, I've completely convinced myself that Providence is going to beat the number one team in the country in UConn. And I'll tell you why. Georgetown, in hindsight, underwhelming win. But when you look at it, stakes were high. A lot of turnovers. A lot of young guys on that team. There was just too much at stake. I think if it wasn't coached by Ed Cooley, we would have beat that Georgetown team by 50. But we went on scoring droughts. We turned the ball over too many times. We got in foul trouble because it's a high state game. That's going to happen. Mm -hmm. There has been at least three teams a night that are double digit favorites that win outright. And all I'm saying, why not us tonight? Why not us? Everyone last night was like, South Carolina's plus 13 and a half. What the fuck are they going to win? We were 13 and a half last night when the line opened. We're 12 and a half now. I'm not saying. That that means we're an outright winner. All I'm saying is, why not us? Why can't we be one of the teams with a massive spread that went outright? That's fair. I mean, yeah. why not us? That's a lot of points, regardless. That's like a lot of points. That's a lot. Of that's points. a lot of points. It's a lot of points. It could be a Michigan situation. What's their big man's name? UConn. Who? Klingon. Klingon. Yeah. This guy. He might, fucking bot. He might eat. But he. But my thing is though, he's like Oduro is a top three big man in the Big East, and I think people are like forgetting it. When you watch him play, he's fucking incredible. Was Oduro? Was he on Seton Hall before? No. Or is that a different dude? Did you know that Providence has only had transfers from one school this year? Where from? George Mason. 
Oh, oh yeah. Where Kim that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> we don't have a single transfer from another school other than George Mason. That's what Mizzou did too last year. We had all Cleveland State dudes because we got we retained yeah. everybody. That's what we did. Um, also, just there's been a lot of controversy on Biggie's Twitter. There's a great documentary put out about Divine Providence about the departure of Ed Cooley. Um, I think his name is Jeff, not Jeff Goldblum. Who's the guy on Twitter? Put on the field of 68. He's a fucking bozo. I hate him <laughs> so much. Jeff Goldman, not Jeff Goldman. Oh, what's his fucking name? Oh. Oh. Would you just come on, man? Josh, you're supposed to know this stuff. <laughs> You know, Josh, when we sit here and I say things that I clearly should have had prepared, Jeff Goodman, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Holy shit. He's got Ed Cooley's meat so far down as whatever. I'm just going to remove myself from the situation. But he's trying to stand up for Ed Cooley, and I've just had enough of it. And, like, Jeff Goodman, you're a fucking bozo. If you guys have a chance and they ever put the documentary back up on YouTube called Divine Providence, go check it out. It's a fantastic documentary um, put together by a DePaul Burner fan, by the way. I think it's like Demon Sports or Blue Demon Sports, I think, or whatever. Um, but it's a great documentary. Very interesting. Um, all right, Josh. Tell me what's going on in the world, man. We got three things every day we talk about. Josh tells me what's going on in the world. We talk about them. What do we got? So to start off, I saw this morning that yeah. Patrick Mahomes says that Sunday wasn't the first time that he had issues with Justin Tucker. I don't know if you saw that. His quote was, I've had seven years of doing the same warm-up routine, and there's only been three occasions where a kicker wasn't necessarily moving out of the way. And it was in Baltimore all three times. So here's my thing that I saw with that. I think Justin Tucker in the locker room was like, I don't understand. He was like, I don't like it's crazy that we even have to talk about this. I've been I've had the same warm-up routine for my entire life. Yeah. Like I start at that goal line and that's what I do every single game. What Justin Tucker said is that Pat Holmes that he asked him. He was like, yo, can you move your helmet in footballs so I can warm up? And Justin Tucker said he moved him. And then Travis Kelsey came over and like threw him out of the way. Well, I saw Mahomes threw him too. He also kicked him. The balls? And the, and the, the T too. Well, no, no, I'm talking about, so Justin, the way Justin Tucker explained it was he was like, Pat Mahomes asked if he could move his helmet and balls to warm up. So Justin Tucker moved the helmet and balls over. And then Pat Mahomes was warming up. And then he said, Travis Kelsey came out of nowhere and just threw my shit. So that's when you see Travis Kelsey throw the balls in the helmet. Justin Tucker had apparently already moved that stuff. And then I think Pat Mahomes, he's a little bitch boy, probably got all fired up and was like, yeah, you know, look it. And then kicked his tee. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't think the tee was even in the way. I could have seen the concern of the helmets and the balls because they were a little bit close from like where he was finishing, just from the camera angle. But again, I mean, do you feel big? Like, do you feel big when you fuck with a kicker? Like what? It's like fucking with a ball boy. Like they have no... There's no animosity there. Like the kicker's not going to come out on the field and like punish you. Like that's just the dumbest position to like talk shit to. Yeah, I just I'm I'm not the biggest Pat Mahomes guy, but I think I'm on his side here. I'm not going to lie. Wow. That feels Cuz I feel like I mean a quarterback's routine like you know what it is, right? Like Justin Tucker's obviously seen him do this before two other times and he's had problems with Patrick Mahomes. Then he goes back again to do it. I honestly love the move from Justin Tucker because you're I just, love the move, but you're I committing to let's get in his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that, but I also don't think that Patrick Mahomes is wrong for like kicking his shit out of the way and being like, get the fuck out of here. Cause like you would do the same thing. Like I, I know I would do the exact same thing as Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. If someone was like trying to mess with my routine before the game, I would get them out of there as fast as possible. I just feel like to a certain extent, it's also it's a kicker. He's like, like if Tucker it was, can't move the field goals though. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah, he'll be kicking from the half yard line. But that's his routine though. You want to talk about like every other end zone? But ever, but it's but not like. But there's it's not a little like actually. Genuinely but there's a little. Matters, there's which, a little showmanship in that though. It's like <laughs> this is my routine. Like yeah. I'm in my house. Like fuck. I'm gonna like uh, knowing we already have problems. I might as well try to get in his head a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't hate the move by either party. But I also feel like, dude, you're like, you're kicking like the kicker shit out of the way. Like that is just the most it's not cool. shit. It's yeah, not like, cool. You don't yeah. look tough doing that. No. Like if it was like a wide receiver and you like threw his gloves and there was like a little tough, like Justin Tucker's never going to be like, like he, the, all he's going to do is be like, dude, what the fuck? I just hate how he acts so innocent that when you know he knew what he was doing. You know yeah, what I mean? Like he it. knew, he yeah, knew exactly it. what you he was doing. Though. You yeah. It, though. I don't know. I'm not a big Justin Tucker guy either. I'm a huge Justin I kind of hate both of them. That's insane. Not liking Justin Tucker is just, that's just weird energy. I didn't off. like I don't like Justin Tucker because of the kickers that we've had over the years. 
the yeah. Bears. Well, <laughs> that's, that's literally the only reason. Well, he's I like see him go. kicking 98%, and we had Cody Parkey double doinking in 2018. I've never been mad about the kickers the Jets had. We've always had good kids, so one of our better positions. You guys have the leg right now, right? Yeah, Greg. Yeah. Third leg, Greg. Goat. Literally, goat. <laughs> Same with our punter, Thomas Morse. He was like AFC player of the week or something like that one week. Our punter. That's insane. Yeah. AFC play, special teams player. Yeah, special teams. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Not <laughs> could AFC you imagine a punter? Just... I mean, dude, the work that he puts in, yeah, yeah. I could imagine. <laughs> I think a special teams player. Yeah, you're right. AFC player of the week is fucking. Gr- Grin said that Nick Folk was moose for the Jets. He wasn't like moose, but like compared to like Greg and. Yeah, it might have been moose. I don't know. I think I just got recency bias with Greg because he's so fucking good. Yeah, he's auto. Like, he's literally automatic. Got a leg. Leg. All right. Let's move on to the next thing. We were talking about this actually before the show. And I thought that you had a very hot take on this. Yeah. Ranking your favorite chicken spots. I know that these, Chad, I know that all these like aren't exactly the same type of chicken places. But yep. Mikey's got a very interesting take on this. Out of these four places, rank them. Chick-fil-A, Popeye's, KFC, Cane's. So here's where I started. And chat, put your put your uh, your list in the chat. I said Canes. I'm gonna go Chick Fil A is the worst. God, that is for the so reason crazy. that when I say like chicken spots, I want to go there. I want to get a thigh. I want to get a breast. I want to get a little drumstick, and I want it to be breaded, fried, and I want to feel like I'm having comfort food. Chick Fil A, like if I want some chicken nuggets, yeah, it's up there. I also think Chick Fil A is a little underwhelming. I think it's a little overhyped. Okay, last place for me in this conversation. Next would be Canes because you're not getting, <clears throat> you're not getting a lot from Canes. It's just the chicken fingers. Like if I just want chicken fingers, yeah, I might go to Canes, but it's underwhelming. You don't get a lot, but there's sauce. I'm not. No, I feel like no. it's good. It's the best sauce, but it's not is. like I'm living or dying by cane sauce. Cane sauce is the best sauce for chicken. I don't know is. if it's the best. That feels crazy. I don't think that's crazy. The at best all. sauce for chicken. The best. That feels insane to me. I don't know if it cane sauce, I feel like for me, is just like another sauce. It's not something God. where I'm like, oh, I want canes because I want the sauce. I feel like some people get canes because they want the sauce. Not me. That's what I do. Not me. Not me. And then I would go Popeyes. KFC is my clear number one because those 11 herbs and spices <laughs> just hit so different. And I feel like people forget how good the sides are at KFC. They are good. Every side that Popeyes has that KFC has is better at KFC. Popeyes, I think, has the most underwhelming sides in the whole chicken business. Yeah, probably. The fries are moose shit. The um, mashed potatoes and gravy is so bland. I know you're a rice and beans guy. Big they put together a good biscuit, but KFC's biscuit is just as good. Yeah, I don't like think the, the biscuit game is really moving. The my red needle. beans and rice is fire. I just think, and I think you guys are upset that I think KFC is the clear number one. Like, I don't really think there's much of a. God, that's so crazy. They got the bucket, man. The bucket. I know they have a bucket. The bucket is like iconic with the it red is, stripes. It is dude. iconic. Keep like, in mind. KFC is the one. The herbs and spices, I think we're forgetting. There's 11 of them. <laughs> it's 11 of them. That's a lot of herbs and spices. Oh, and you can yeah. taste them when you bite into it. I just think they're the best chicken spot. People, dude, there's a lot of mixed emotions in the chat right now. People like love upset? your some people love your take. Some people hate your take. Who's hating my take? I want to hear one. A lot response. of them. Uh Mikey stands alone. <laughs> where it's going too fast you know what i'll stay i'll die on this hill with my flag in my hand that i think kfc is the best chicken spot the famous bowl i forgot that they have oh that that, okay yeah oh my god you want to talk about something that fucks every time yeah the The famous famous bowl. bowl from kfc is literally a creation from god it's so good it's like he put his hands on a dish and said you know what take some mashed potatoes some chicken, some chicken nuggies, a little bit of cheese, a little bit of corn, a lot of gravy. Just put it in a bowl. Oh my have god! You, like Popeyes doesn't have that, dude. No, they don't. Popeyes doesn't have that. Popeyes, I feel like, <clears throat> was in the game and got really overhyped because they came out with the chicken sandwich that was like now looking back, okay, it's not even that good. Yeah, I yeah, didn't like. like it people were in the streets fighting for this chicken sandwich. I didn't even like like it at all. Like I didn't even think it was decent. It's like okay. Yeah. It's not a sandwich. It might I'm be like, the oh, dude, it might be the worst chicken sandwich. Like I think I would rather have McDonald's chicken sandwich over that. I don't like the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. What? Sometimes you bite into the Chick-fil-A chicken. It's I'm a little just... too thick sometimes. Yeah, yeah I know. Like, yeah. I'm kind of out on it's Chick-fil-A. I'm not gonna lie, I'm out on Chick-fil-A. I just get the have you tried their chicken tenders? 
No. They're really good. I normally get the little chicken bites. Yeah. Or the famous wrap. Nope. The Caesar ones? Nope. The grilled oh, wrap. Grill cool is wrap. Is it like the cool yeah, wrap? The cool yeah, wrap. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is good. Yeah, that's what I like. But I'm out on Chick-fil-A. Um, I take KFC has the best chicken, the best sides, the best dishes, because you can get like a, an, a range of stuff. Chick-fil-A is dead last, I think, in the chicken game, they're mid. And then I think it goes Popeyes and then Canes, just above Chick-fil-A. Javon said I come in here for five seconds and hear this bullshit, man. What's Javon's favorite? Yeah, Javon, put your list in yeah, here. Yeah, Javon's buddy. list is going to be so contrarian and like fake yeah. sharp. It's going to be so <laughs> botted, dude. I just know I think, it. I think my list would be Chick-fil-A 1, Canes 2, Chick-fil-A Popeyes. 1 is fucking crazy. I don't think that's crazy. And I think I Popeyes and KFC are kind of a toss-up for me. Put I like, KFC last. I think I, I like you. I think I like Popeyes chicken, it, like just the chicken more than KFC's. But I, I like everything else about KFC more than Popeyes. That's just like so Popeyes three, KFC four. That's in, like, this is why Chick Fil A's auto one. What is Javon? Javon, hurry up, buddy. It's also like I think people forget I'm from the Northeast, so we don't have like corner store chicken shops like you do down here in yeah. Texas and stuff. So like obviously like our regional local chicken shop is going to be way better than like a KFC or Popeyes. But <clears throat> in the Northeast where we don't really have that, like it's KFC over everything. Like if I want some chicken, like I'm getting KFC. Oh, and see, I might I, get a famous bowl and get horny. Dude, like I like chick. I mean, KFC is like my last resort. Like That's if there's nothing crazy. else. A last resort KFC. If there's nothing crazy. else. Literally crazy. Javon said KFC is dead last out of those four. But he won't give the list. Like this coward. <laughs> just you're hiding is what it is. It's cowardly because he doesn't want to put the list together. Um, all right. What else happened, Josh? Um, all right. So I asked you this question before. Yeah. I want you to tell me a player that's going to get drafted this year, like later round, that you think is undervalued and is going to bust in the NFL. And I got mine first. Okay. I'll screen share a little video. But I do want to ask you a question. Yes. Is this a situation of late first round or you want like second, third round? Like second, third round. Like guys, I mean, like, I know that you'd want like Keon, right? Like that'd be, he, I, was gonna I say, think that he would work. I was going to say Keon or Leggett, but I think they're both going to be first rounders. Yeah, they might be. I think, and like, I think Leggett second, is like third. my dark horse to be like very, very good. Second round. Okay, let me think. All right, here, I'll throw mine up real quick. Yeah, yeah, I, okay. I got a little video for the chat. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This guy. I'm not going to be able to see the video. Lad McConkie. All right, can I look over here? Yeah. Wait, why did you do that? Oh, it's off screen sharing. Let's go, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, give me one sec. Dude, I'm trying to think who could be. Um, I'm trying to think who could be. I'm really trying to think who could be the. Uh... Look at how disgusting these routes are. Come here. Okay. Disgusting. Georgia. Oh, yeah. This man is going to be a dog. Yeah. Disgusting. Okay. All right. I think I got mine. Making it second round, I'm not going to lie, is a little tough for me. I'm really trying to think, and I'm really trying to give you, like, a really good answer. That would be yours, though? Oh, yeah. You I think, think he's going to, like, but when you say bust, I'm thinking, like, Pro Bowl. Like rookie of the year candidate. Oh well, no, I mean like that can happen. In the I mean like a guy football. that's like Cody Schrader. Someone said, I don't hate him yeah. at all. Actually, yeah, he, he can... runs really hard. He reminds you like a Pacheco. Yeah, just to do that's gonna get drafted. I mean, yeah. he's old though. Yeah, you grab he's... him in the second round and he just yeah. runs well, really fucking hard. Schrader's gonna go like fifth round, probably fourth, fifth. He'll be like he'll be back there. Sorry, not second round, dude. I'm really trying to think who are like some second round guys. I mine was gonna be Leggett. But I didn't know we wanted like later rounds. Yeah. Let's think here. Who are your wagons? Like, who are your wet? Like, I'm so high on Keon Coleman. It's disgusting. Yeah, I yeah. think he might go from bottom of the first. And once they do the pro day and like combine, he's going to go to like a top 15 pick yeah. because he's just an, ath an athletic masterpiece. Like, it does not get better from an athletic standpoint than Keon Coleman. Watching him in person in that Florida State game. There is literally, I'm convinced, no one in the world that can stop that kid. Like, yeah, no dude, one. That punt return that he had dude. when we were there, it's like, he like... he You can throw yeah, the ball teleports. four area codes above him, and he can grab it. Yeah, he's so... Like, athletic. he's a he is a legitimate plane in the sky, and he floats, dude. And he runs hard, and he's quick, and he can accept... Dude, 
Like he is literally an athletic masterpiece. Like if there's one kid in the draft that I think could change a franchise that's not a quarterback, I think it's Keon Coleman. I feel like he's like an NBA type athlete that's playing football because he also played division one college basketball at michigan state like people okay. forget that oh i forgot about that like yeah, he yeah. was a two-sport division video. one athlete in two of the hardest sports in a hard so conference makes sense. he does play like a basketball player like, my answer would be keon coleman because i don't think everyone's talking about him a lot mm -hmm. and i think outside of keon coleman i would go leg it because i think he's i think the comparison to debo is easy because he went to the same school but i think he's going to be a guy like that where he's just going to be like a swiss army knife and I think he was underwhelming because like Spencer Rattler and that South Carolina team just couldn't figure it out a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. But when they figured it out and he was the guy, dude, he'd have fucking 200 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, he did go crazy for them this year. I'm trying to think the late round guys. You think like Blake Corum will do anything? I was trying to think Blake Corum. I liked his backup more. Donovan, I think. Did he I don't know player? if he's going though. Yeah, I but I play. love Donovan. I think he's going to be unbelievable. I think Kool-Aid McKinstry is going to be really good. He'll be top He's, 10. Yeah, top 10, though. Dude, this is kind of tough when you think, like, second, third I round know. guys. Because you don't know who's going to drop. Yeah. You know what I mean? What about, like, I'm trying to think of, like. like is Penix going to be a second round guy? A.D. Mitchell? Hear, I don't hear a lot of. A.D. Mitchell could be a second. You know, could, you know what it'll be fun to root for? Xavier Worthy. I don't think he's going to be a first round guy. No, he won't be. Someone <laughs> said Brock Bowers. <laughs> no. The first, the best tight yeah, end. He's yeah, he's one of the best tight ends. <laughs> um, dude, who's like a quarterback that's going to drop to the second round? Like Michael Penix, Brendan Rice, Javon said. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah, Malachi Corley, kid yeah. from Western Kentucky. He could be a shout he of could. like a guy you grab in the second round. Dude, this is Third, one fifth, that I fifth. think is correct. What? Trice picks Roman Wilson. I think that he is going to be a dog. Yeah, dude. I think he's, he's fucking. He was good on Michigan, dude. So good. So good. He'll be a great slot. I think. In the NFL, I'm trying to think of like really sneaky court. Jordan Travis could drop because oh, of he's his an, injury. He'll be like way back. Give me Jordan Travis, dude. Did you know that he was supposed to play in the Shrine Bowl? Like no he's way. gonna be there. Oh fuck yeah, yeah. I saw Joe <laughs> Milton's playing now. Is he? Yeah. In the maybe Shrine a Bowl? Different bowl, maybe the Reese's Bowl. Yeah, maybe a different the bowl. Senior Bowl. Yeah, oh, yeah, Senior Bowl. He's playing in. Yeah, yeah. Um, now I'm gonna go Jordan Travis. Give me Jordan Travis. I kind of like that one. Jordan Travis, Ricky Pearsall. Oh, Ricky's a good one, dude. Good one. Ricky's a good one. Fuck, that's good. I like He's the Ricky so one. Yeah, I had one really like the Ricky one. I really like the Ricky one. Ricky is so good. The kid from Florida, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Dude, Ricky is good. That's a fucking good one. Wow. Yeah. Ricky Pearsall, I think, is good. Pearsall and McConkey, the two white, the two white dude, receivers. Pearsall is crazy. a good one, dude. Um, all right. We've made it to eleven twenty. Let's talk some slates. The plan B did not hit yesterday. The it's already locked did not hit yesterday, but that's okay. That's why we do this. We bounce back. I'm feeling red hot. I'm feeling good to go. Josh, are you feeling good to go? Feeling great. All right, let's do it. The already locked. Here. Highest over on the college basketball board. We lock it every single day. Josh, what is it today? It is Florida in Kentucky. And I fucking love this Over game. 169 and a half. And I... I'm going to nuke that shit. It's at 170 now. 70 and I'll tell you what. Bumped. I fucking love this game. You want to know why? Because well, I'm going to take my greasy, dirty little mitts, mm -hmm. and I'm going to put them all over Kentucky. I knew you would. I'm going to put – oh, my – I'm going to put them all over <laughs> Kentucky. Because Florida feels like the easy bet. Bro. Take the points of Florida. Five points. Take the points of Florida. Kentucky, if Rob Dillingham plays, which I think he is, is going – to take the head off of this Florida team. <laughs> They're going to take the head off of this Florida team. After an underwhelming performance in Arkansas, I think we're walking back home and we're going to beat the shit out of the Florida Gators. Okay. I'm going to put my mitts all over this game. They're going to be all, all over. You're not going to be able to go near this game without seeing my fingerprints all <laughs> over it, too. Like if there was a fingerprint test, I would, I'd be, I'd pop. You'd be gone. God, you'd be in jail. I'd be in jail for how much <laughs> my fingers are gonna be all over this game. I don't know if you saw this though. Mizzou plays Arkansas today. I did see that. Mizzou's minus six and a half. I know we were gonna talk about it, dude. I'm not touching it. I'm I not, wouldn't. But like, I why? would rather. That's the, yeah. That I bad. would rather. I'm not even kidding. I would rather eat a bullet at full velocity in GTA <laughs> than have to watch. A single second of that basketball game. Yeah, that is going to be so the gross. worst. What's the over under that game? Uh, 100? Look. Is it at 100? It is at minus five and a half now and 144 and a half. That's fucking disgusting. That is foul. 
I'm not touching that game. I don't even want to sniff it. All right, Josh, plan B, what do we got? Last game on the slate. Just in case you made some mistakes or some decisions you shouldn't have on the board, you take our plan B and you sweat with us. Last bet of the day. What is it, Josh? St. Mary's and Santa. <coughs> oh, oh shit. And Santa Clara. Oh. Santa Clara plus 14. Plus the points. Yeah, we got. I mean, we're taking points, right? We're taking the points. Yeah, we're taking. We don't. Point. Yeah, no, no. gotta take the points. You could sprinkle. You could sprinkle. Yeah, that's line. a sprinkle. It's a sprinkle. Yeah, dude. Sprinkle on the money line. I kind of. I love Santa. Clara. People They're forget Josh team. gave us plus chicken UCSB money line when they were plus four and a half in Hawaii. Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. He was like, leave the points and fucking hit. The only time you take the rainbow is when they're on the land and they're dogs. That's fair. You don't fade the rainbow on the land when they're dogs. I used to system play. Just take the over on the island late night. Um. I still might get back into that this year. That was one of my favorite bets. But you got to make sure you're up units when you do that because those games can they be never, horrible. Yeah, they, they rarely go over. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I love taking the points on the island. Um, all right. I'm going to give you some early leans. Actually, I don't like using leans. I'm not a fucking capper, guys. All right. I don't do the leans. I don't do the fucking plus. Like, I don't do that. And you know that. And if you're here for that reason for this show, <laughs> stay around because BTL comes up right next. Okay? You don't even have to turn off the Twitch. Just stay right here. Book it network. We got you all day. BTL up next for the sharp place. What are you giggling at? You gotta. I can't. Like, I legitimately can't say it. Josh is telling me he can't tell me what he's giggling at because that's just insane. All right. I'm going to tell you my leans for today. We're taking Baylor Moneyline on the road. You know what? We got burnt yesterday taking Booty Cheeks, Kansas State, and Moose Shit Villanova. I'm taking the better team on the road, even though it's a short line below me. Okay. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. That's not even a lean. I'm just doing that. Pit Wake Forest, kind of a team and game I want to put my little greasy grub mitts on. I'm not going to lie to you. But every time I take Wake Forest away from home, they lose. And I've never been on the right side of a pit bet. So this might be a good prop bet. Maybe we take our guy Carlton Carrington. Maybe we take Hunter Salas. Maybe we do that. But we're definitely going to be involved in this game somehow because I'm actually going to watch this game. Maybe we take that over. I just like these two teams and I want to watch this game. Fair enough. Um. I was looking at the slate. I don't mind ECU at home, but South Florida at, with points. Every time I get scared to take them, they seem to cover with ease. So I might look into that game a little bit deeper. Duke and Easy is minus 12 and a half. When I woke up, they were 11 and a half. Is Day Day Grant back? Possible guest on the show. Is he back from the concussion? It feels like if he's back, they cover that spread. Um, your eyes and Mushit School. Just wanted to say that. Um, I did text my buddy this morning. I've got one buddy that I went to college with that I text him one random college basketball play. I do no research on. I just look at the lines and I text him the name of the school. It hits at about a 30% clip. I texted him Mercer Moneyline this morning. So <laughs> you could fade that if you want, but that's what I texted him this morning. We always put a unit on it and it normally loses. So it's just kind of a bit now. Um, Putting our hands all over that Kentucky over and Kentucky. Memphis minus 14 and a half. Massive spread at home. They're covering that. They haven't covered a big spread in, I think, three games. They lost outright, I think, last time they were minus 11 and a half. Back at home in Memphis, probably going to take that 14 and a half, even though it's a lot of points. I have fully convinced myself the Providence Friars are winning outright tonight against the number one team in the country. Why not us? Why one, not? Of the, one of the bigger spreads on the board. Why not us? Why not us? Why not us? So Just know that. Fordham is a donk in chat. Arkansas, Missouri, we already talked about it. Auburn at home minus 18 and a half against Vanderbilt might be a nuke piece. It's very hard to play in the jungle. And Vanderbilt, I don't even know how they still have an athletic yeah. program across all boards. Like Trash. who is allowing them to keep their athletics? I don't understand. There's no way they're making money on it. There's no way the athletes are having fun. They just take buses and planes to get the shit beat out of them. <laughs> I don't understand. Move conferences. Um, we're taking... Santa Clara with the points on the road. Didn't know it was on the road. That kind of scares me. They said, who's a donk? Fordham. Against, against Richmond. Richmond. Who said that? Uh, handyman. Handyman. How handy is the man? Dude, also, I didn't know that Duquesne's playing Chico State. Yeah. Why Chico that... State. Me and my well, boys from Chicago. Me and my boys in high school, or not in high school, in college, would just auto-fade Chico State. <laughs> They were like always plus 30 every single game, and they would just get blown out. Xavier at home. I'll Xavier. take the sharp line again. This is the last time, Josh. The last time I'll do it. St. John's is finally getting hot. Rick Patino might have figured out his flow and his swag, but for some reason, a moose shit 10 and 10 Xavier is a favorite at home. 
So you know what? I'll take Xavier and I'll try it one last time. One last time I will try this shit. And I swear to God, Chad, if it doesn't work, I'm coming for next, even though this is my decision. But I just want the community that would normally be on Xavier to know that I'm going to leave that community if this doesn't hit. I'm fucking over it. All right, guys. We've reached the part of the show. We get a little inspiration, a little bit of motivation. I'm feeling good today, guys. But before we do that, we're going to bring up our little golden egg goose grins. Because he shits out little golden egg plays sometimes. <laughs> oh, Mikey, you're going to hate me today, man. So, so tonight, I am going to sit on the couch, enjoy a nice Chick-fil-A sandwich, and I'm going to watch UConn cover minus 13 and a half. Get him off. Against no, Bobby. actually, get him off. Like, get him off. <laughs> get him off. Get him off. Get him off. What are we doing here, Grins? This is supposed to be a family. This show is supposed to be a family. What was that? What the fuck was that? I feel like I just got blindsided. I feel like I just had an own soldier in my army come up behind me and stab me with his bayonet. What the hell was that? That was two pronged. Talked about Chick fil A and UConn. Said, said UConn minus 13 and a half. Bang. CFA. Bang. <laughs> two of my least favorite things just got said in a sentence directed towards me. That's <laughs> fucking crazy. I've never seen someone prey on my downfall that hard. That was incredible. That was insane out of grins. I love it. Dude, I was just saying how great of a show we've had and how great. Like, that was <laughs> fucked up. Dude, I feel like I just got nailed from behind. That's Pause. Funny. Pause. All right, I don't want to run into BTL, but listen, guys, we end every show with a little inspiration, a little motivation. I was listening to some trippy red this morning. Hopefully, we woke up the right way. I just want you guys to know I love every single one of you. I'm here for every single one of you. If you ever need anything, if you're ever going through a tough time, don't be afraid to lean on the kid Mikey Overs. All right, I got you. I promise you, I got you. But listen, I was listening to Trippy Red this morning in the car. And this song Limitless came on. And he said, I've been living without a limit. Limitless, right? And I started thinking about that. And someone came to me in my drive. And I just think it needs to be said. The dreams and aspirations that you have in life have no limit. We talk about athletes a lot of the time and we say their ceiling is probably a three and D guy in the NBA. His ceiling is probably a number two wide receiver. Ceilings are meant for basements and houses. Ceilings are not meant for dreams and aspirations. Okay. So if someone in your life is trying to put a ceiling on something that you want to do on something that you want to chase, fuck them. Okay, fuck them because ceilings are meant for basements and houses, not for your dreams and your aspirations. If you got a boss or you got a coworker that's like, I, I don't know if you should go for that promotion, man. I don't know if you should do that. I feel like you're really good at what you're doing right now. But if that's your dream and that's your aspiration, you go for it. Okay, it's a hump day. You got over the hump. That's all you needed to do. One more day and we're at the weekend. All right. Do me a favor. Chase something that matters. We're a month into the new year. Have you done what you wanted to do? Have you checked any boxes on your list? Have you started chasing that thing that you said at the beginning of the new year you were going to chase? Because if you haven't, it's time to start doing it. All right? Let's go have one. Stay right there. We got BTL coming up next right at you. You're going to get your sharp plates from them. I guarantee you Xavier is going to be on there. Okay? But stay right there, guys. As always, good morning, good afternoon, and good night from the morning after with Josh Grins and Mikey. And we'll see you here again tomorrow morning. Love you all.